Shinji Kagawa was like a god to Borussia Dortmund fans in the early 2010s. His silky play and expert finishing helped deliver successive Bundesliga titles to the Signa Aduna Park and win Dortmund's first ever domestic double. I mean, come on. You can't not like Shinji Kagawa. The man was so good he caught the eye of Sir Alex Ferguson, who was desperate to claw back the Premier League from Manchester City after a horrific final day. But it seems the moment Kagawa made that switch to Old Trafford, his chance of fulfilling his potential was ripped away from him. This is the complete rise and fall of Shinji Kagawa. Shinji first started playing football at the age of just five and featured for multiple sides across his youth. First was Marino FC, then Kobe NK Football Club, his home city, before FC Miyagi Barcelona, and finally started his professional career at Cerezo Osaka. Osaka first noticed Kagawa when he was 17 and became the first ever Japanese player to sign a professional contract before graduating from high school. Kagawa first made his debut for Osaka in 2007, the season after Osaka had just been relegated from Japan's top flight. And Kagawa was lined up to be a big part of their rebuild, making 35 appearances in the first season, but narrowly missed out on going through to promotion into the first tier. But Shinji was hungry for more, and he got it. For the 07-08 season, Kagawa lit up the second tier with 16 goals in 35 games. In his final 11 league games of the season, the youngster converted 11 times. But still, Osaka weren't promoted just yet. Then came another season and this time Kagawa was on another level. With 44 games in the 08-09 season, he scored 27 and assisted 16. That's an average goal contribution in all bar one of his games. Osaka were finally into the top flight, where Kagawa would go on to pull out seven goals in 11 games that next season. But waiting around the corner, was a certain German mastermind waiting to snap up the Japanese superstar. You see, Jurgen Klopp had just signed as Dortmund manager back in 2008, and he was determined to reclaim the club as German's champions for the first time in almost 10 years. But he had limited resources. The hierarchy had told him there'd be limited fees and the most he could spend on a player was 5 million euros. Fine. A cheeky Robert Lewandowski came in for four and a half million, Mario Goetze from the academy, Lucas Piszczek on a free, and Kagawa for only 350,000 euros, thanks to a European release clause in his contract with Osaka. Kagawa knew very little about the German giants, but joined. He saw the huge stadium and thought, why not? Of course, the charming words of Klopp also played a part, but Kagawa had his dream in, and after a few sessions, was determined to show he could play at this level and overcome the recent setback of not being picked for the 2010 World Cup. My life became training, eating and resting, said Kagawa. My first year in Dortmund was Klopp's third. The other players all knew what he wanted. They had a tight core and the right team spirit. They all knew their positions, the demand of the manager. That made it easier for me. I just had to fit into a system that was already being successful. It was exciting. Four games into that 2010-11 season, Dortmund had lost one and one two, with Kagawa grabbing his first goal for Dortmund in a 2-0 win over Wolfsburg. Now face the Riviera derby against Schalke, perhaps one of their biggest games of the season. Kagawa was asked before the game how he was feeling, um, with balls of steel, may I say. He said, we will win the match and I will score two goals. And he did just that. Two goals to help deliver Dortmund their 3-1 win and the travelling Dortmund fans had only one name to sing after the game, Shinji Kagawa. Kagawa would go on to score another five goals in the Bundesliga before the turn of the year, but missed the second part of the season for a broken foot. Nevertheless, Dortmund still won the league and despite only appearing in 18 of the 34 league games, Kagawa still made the German team of the season. Now that was outstanding, but the following season was even greater and Kagawa's very best to date. You see, as we all know, Bayern dominated the Bundesliga back then and retaining the German title hadn't been done by a club apart from Bayern since Dortmund did themselves in the mid 90s. But Klopp was focused and sure of his side a side now with a fully fit Shinji Kagawa. They ripped apart the Bundesliga once again. They beat Bayern three times that season, 
first away from home with Kagawa assisting Mario Goethe, then also winning 1-0 at home and clinched the title with nine points ahead of their rivals. Up next was a chance to win Dortmund's first ever domestic double, the DFB Poker, final against who else but Bayern. And our Japanese star shone once again, getting a goal and assist in Dortmund's 5-2 victory. Kagawa had ended this season with 17 goals and 14 assists in all competitions. 31 goal contributions in his 43 games. Kagawa had gone from the second tier of Japanese football to being one of the best midfielders in the world. But it was about to get that better for Shinji, because watching on at that DFB Polka final was none other than Sir Alex Ferguson. Manchester United manager at the time and was scouting around Europe looking for the best he could to snatch the Premier League back out of Manchester City's hands. It was the second time Ferguson had watched Kagawa play that season with eyes also on Mats Hummels and Robert Lewandowski. Now Ferguson wanted to bring Kagawa over to England and help rebuild his broken Manchester United side but Kagawa wanted a guarantee. Was the offer coming straight from Ferguson? Where would Kagawa play in the Manchester United new side? A face-to-face -face with the legend was needed, and the two met in an airport. Kagawa didn't understand much English, but the message was clear. Ferguson wanted Kagawa to play a key part in winning back the Premier League title. And Kagawa was signed for United for 12 million, with five in adults. But another signing loomed around the corner for Ferguson's United. One that really shook Carrington with its magnitude. When Robin walked in, said Kagawa, the whole dressing room was like, wow. He was the top scorer in England and we'd just taken him from a main rival. We were ready to be champions. But Kagawa got off to somewhat of a shaky start. United went on to lose the first game of that season to Everton, away from home, when Marouane Fellaini scored the only goal in a 1-0 loss, playing in a similar position to Kagawa. The Belgians scored, Kagawa didn't. The next game against Fulham though, sure, United won 3-2 and Kagawa did score, but he was up against Moussa Dembele, one of the best physically midfielders in the league, and Shinji struggled. If it's this tough against the lower teams, said Shinji, what will it be like against the best? But Kagawa had his goal to his name at United, and he certainly impressed the United fans. <laughs> Despite what you may remember, Kagawa had a great first season in England to give Sir Alex Ferguson a brilliant send-off. United had reclaimed the title, which was Kagawa's third successive one for himself. He'd scored a hat-trick against Norwich and ended with six goals and six assists in his 26 games. Figures which were hampered by his lack of defined role and injuries. Nevertheless, not a bad start. David Moyes from July the 1st will become the new manager of Manchester United on a six-year deal. So Alex Ferguson had told Robin Van Persie and Shinji Kagawa when they signed that he wouldn't be retiring any time soon, which was true at the time, but not exactly what they'd hoped for. It was his decision. He told us to our face and I respected it, said Kagawa. Genuinely, I was a little sad because he had worked for so many years. I wanted to work with him for many more, but everyone has to stop sometimes. Kagel was given new opportunities under Moyes, but with Rooney now being played as a number 10 and clearly Moyes' favourite, Marouane Fellaini also signing, Kagawa now wasn't in his preferred position, now out wide rather than through the centre as a number 10. Rooney was so good that he gave confidence to those around him, said Kagawa. He played as a number 10 usually, Rooney scored, he set up goals, he could dribble, he was even good defensively. He worked so hard. He was the best player I saw in England, and he was in my position. He played in different positions, and that didn't make it easier for me, because one of them was mine. In the January window, things didn't get any easier either. United weren't doing well, and Moyes was looking for new tricks. Juan Mata was brought in, and Adnan Yanazai was starting to find his feet. But that was just more competition for Kagawa, and it wasn't good enough for him. He first met with Sir Alex Ferguson to guarantee he'd get regular minutes at United. Now, he was playing outside and hardly at all. Shinji Kagawa is one of the best players in the world and he now plays 20 minutes at Manchester United on the left wing, said Jurgen Klopp in a press conference around that time. My heart breaks. Really, I have tears in my eyes. 
Central midfield is Shinji's best role. He's an offensive midfielder with one of the best noses for goal I ever saw. But for the most Japanese people, it means more to play for Manchester United than Dortmund. For that following 13-14 season, Shinji didn't score for Manchester United. Moyes was then sacked, Ryan Giggs temporarily in charge, and then Louis van Gaal appointed. Sure, he was one of the greatest of all time when he arrived, but the first thing he said to Kagawa was, Shinji, you're not going to play as much for me. When I heard that, said Shinji, when a player hears that, they think it's time for me to go. Kagawa's time, just two years in, at Manchester United was over. But where best to go but the club who he played his very best for? Borussia Dortmund, where fans still today walk around with the name Kagawa on the back of their shirt, and they were desperate for him to be back. Kagawa, after a rough time in England, wasn't the same player, but still important for Dortmund. He finished 14-15 with six goals and 10 assists, and then 15-16 with a great return. 13 goals and 13 assists as Dortmund finished second in the Bundesliga. In 16-17 though, not so good, with six goals and eight assists, but he was back playing regular football. 30 appearances that season. The season that followed though, brought about perhaps one of the worst incidents of Kagawa's life. On the 11th of April, 2017, a bomb exploded close to the Dortmund team bus as they traveled to their home game to face Monaco in the quarter final of the Champions League. The bomb was detonated by a then 28-year-old German-Russian who looked a profit from Dortmund's share price falling. In Kagawa's position though, thank God the bus glass was reinforced. There was a loud bang, calls Kagawa. I was terrified to leave the bus. We could see Mark Bartra had a bad injury. We thought it was ISIS. It was not. It was an individual. The players were then united. We said we would win the cup together and I'll never forget this. I was probably in shock. Dortmund, horrified by the incident, wanted to reschedule their tie against Monaco for a later date. But much to many people's criticism, UEFA insisted it could only be delayed by 24 hours. Monaco won 3-2 at the Signa Aduna Park and went through to the semis with an aggregate scoreline of 6-3. Dortmund's squad was traumatised and it's no coincidence that soon after nearly the entire Dortmund squad was changed. Thomas Tuchel, then manager of Dortmund, left a month later to take a year off from the sport and now Dortmund were changing managers as often as United. Marco Reus was now preferred in the number 10 spot by another new manager, Lucien Favre. Kagawa was then loaned out to Besiktas. His time at Dortmund was his last in a top five league in Europe. A sad end to the high profile career of a player who was once one of the world's very best. Kagawa did then permanently move to Real Zagorosa in the second tier of Spain after a disappointing time with Besiktas. As the club were desperate to return to the top flight with Kagawa, in the end, he couldn't be the man to deliver. He'd committed two years for the club and, as always, was outstandingly professional. But on a higher wage than others, Zaragoza didn't want him anymore and their parties mutually agreed to terminate his contract. Whilst in Spain, Kagawa scored four times and assisted twice in 36 games. This fate was then repeated again, this time at Greek club, PAOK. -okay. A year after signing though, new manager Razvan Luceso told him he was no longer in his plans. Shinji did consider retirement at this point, but thought he'd try out his time in Belgium with St. Trident. He was there for a year and on his arrival, he took to Twitter saying, as officially announced, I am joining St. Trident. I was struggling last year under a hard term, but I always have a strong desire to play in Europe. I will keep going to play football in order to say my decision was right. Kagawa went on to only score twice though, in 18 games, and assisting once. Earlier this year though, Kagawa made a return that seemed just right. 13 years after leaving for Germany, he returned to Cerezo Osaka in the Japan top flight, the very club he first made his mark for before leaving for Dortmund. A legend of the Japanese game and a player who stamped an outstanding mark in Europe for his home country. A man that regularly featured for Japan and gave them some of their fondest memories. And at last, he's back playing regular football. All he really ever wanted. Sure, he's not the spring chicken he once was in Asia, but he's home and he's doing the thing he loves. When we reflect on Kagawa's career, yes, disappointment in the end does spring to mind. But Kagawa achieved what many players would only dream of doing. 
three successive league titles in Europe and in the early 2010s. He was one of the greatest players on the planet. Had he not grabbed the chance at Manchester United and who knows, gone to Barcelona or a more physically comfortable league or stayed at Dortmund, his career could have prospered for much longer. Regardless, in our eyes here at TFQ, Shinji Kagawa will always be remembered as one of the game's very best.